Doesn't that look like a lot of fun? Do you know how easy it would be to join them? Hi, I'm Dr. Christopher Alexander and people around here know me as the video games professor. That's because I'm one of the first professors to build a faculty-led varsity esports program, among the first of its kind. Now I know what you're thinking. How is that possible? Well, esports is simply the professional side of gaming. You can liken it to any pro sport like football or hockey. It's the business of playing games at an extremely high skill level, and our program dives into the nuances of team development, sports management, entertainment, and game creation. My students don't become experts in a certain game or how to win a tournament. They become experts in how to excel in the esports industry and learn how to navigate the business of gaming. And who is the business targeting? Teens. The program was a success, so much so that I was invited to develop it again for another higher ed institution here in Toronto. But how is this even possible? Well, thanks to a booming industry and the increasing acceptance, especially from industry leaders, parents of youth and adolescents, esports isn't just being recognized as a money maker. It's an educational and entertainment game changer, and everyone's in, especially our kids. Hi, I'm Jeff Lachapelle. I'm a documentarian entrepreneur, and an educator in the esports space. I've done a lot of work uh, with different schools and companies to try and bring esports and video games further into the mainstream and hopefully make it more acceptable for parents and kids to engage with. Part of what frustrates me though is that we haven't seen a lot of growth for video games in schools and education as a whole. There's a misapprehension that video games and competitive or professional video games is just playing games, when in reality, it's so much more than that. My name's Sam Rawlings, I'm kind of in the world of esports, I've always Restless, um, it's kind of just, you know, like the long-term gaming name. Um, I am the Partnerships Manager at Adaplay Esports, which is based in promoting um, esports in secondary schools within the UK. Um, it's kind of just wanting to create a secure environment where kids can, you know, not just play games, but kind of get involved in the world of esports. Um, and hopefully from that, you know, they, they get to be a part of the industry I'm so passionate about and have been involved in now for just over six years. My name is Maria Tamellini and I'm co-founder and CEO of Gamer Safer. And I support several organizations that are making an impact in the world. I spent many, many years uh, working with the UN Sustainable Goals. And I realized since I moved from Brazil to Silicon Valley that technology could drive a lot of impact. And from my own experience and my relationships with games, I decided to jump in and found Gamer Safer. I'm Shubna Naika Taylor. I am the curriculum lead for a digital curriculum at Coventry College, but I'm also the team manager of an Overwatch team for Coventry Crosshairs. So my sort of involvement in esports sort of happened when we were part of a digital schoolhouse which is um, run by Yuki um, and they had an Overwatch tournament so we sort of got involved through them and it was at that moment that I realised that I really want to push forward in esports in the UK within education um, and so now we've kind of we work quite closely with British Esports Association um, and we've been with them for about two years, so two seasons um, worth of tournaments, and it's been great. Esports isn't a new thing. For the last 30 years, it has been steadily growing across the world. 
throughout that history, kids have been one of the biggest driving forces in its growth. They have the most time to play and compete, and professional players can start as young as 16 or 17 years old. Gaming and esports really isn't about the game, it's about the connections and community it creates. Even as a kid, video games were a really important part of my social life. Because at their core, when you play a video game with people, you're interacting. It's the same kind of connective fun we get when we play board games together. And I can't remember as a kid how many disputes were solved in Final Destination and Melee, or in Temple and James Bond Goldeneye. And that's probably a factor as to why I got so into esports when I grew up and got into university and beyond. And nowadays, it's even crazier, where you can go to conventions or sold out esports competitions at major sports stadiums and be surrounded by people who are just as excited about video games as you are. Even if you have just one other person, that can still count as a community experience because you have one other person to share these experiences with. And pretty soon, like, as you, as you stay, like, you know, when you stay sort of in your hobby and you like keep on going despite what people say, um, you might find other people who share the same interests. And then before you know it, your, you know, your party of one now becomes like a whole community of 10, 20, 30, even 50 people who share the same experience as you. Um, and so, yes, absolutely. There is a whole community aspect to this. Like if anyone's ever been to an esports event or like a TwitchCon or anything, there are like hundreds of thousands of, of people who all have probably played the same game or even have different games. Esports to me is not just about the competition or the tournaments. It's about things like teamwork. It's about friendships that people in within the team plus the community have kind of developed over the last couple of years that I've seen. And it's just been truly amazing. Like a lot of students of mine have actually come out their shell. That connection is what children are craving. In our sometimes disconnected world, the best place to meet and see your friends is online. Gaming and esports foster that concept in both a team building space as well as through a socialization aspect. While community and connections are important, making sure your kids and teens are making safe connections is more important. Children of any age can be particularly susceptible to bullying and predatory behavior. But there are quite a few folks out there who are championing this cause and making sure that both the esport players and the game developers are looking out for each other. Yeah, so we were born as a company putting proactive protection at the heart of everything we do. And by that, we mean empowering players to craft their own gaming experiences, so saying the way they like to play. The other thing is understanding or verifying that player before they join the game to make sure there is a real person behind that account. And in case that that user do something that is inappropriate, repeating the cycle of banning and like increasing moderation and all of those elements. Um, and also trust and safety. Our main source of um, communication is through a Discord channel, um, and that is moderated by three members of staff as well. So any kind of um, negative sort of behavior that could happen, it's not happened, but if it was, um, there are three members of staff that are able to have a look and just make sure that everyone's on topic um, and they are sort of sharing positivity within um, our Discord community. With the right tools in place, gaming and esports isn't just a great place to play. It's a fantastic place to learn for kids of all ages. If we can do it in universities and high schools or secondary institutions, and my previous work shows that we can, we can do it with primary and elementary school kids too. Video games really reignited my love of learning and my interest in the classroom. And I've been using video games as a support and focusing tool ever since. Um, so Digital Schoolhouse works um, through Yuki, which is um, a UK based sort of games industry body. Um, and they provide a lot of um, training, like professional training or networking events for people in industry. But there's another side to it, which is all about education. So they try to bridge the gap between education and the games industry and esports and through that um, there's lots of events there are lots of sort of communication with schools and colleges to make sure that they are able to um, 
develop particular skills that they might need in the in the industry. At the top of this video, I spoke about why I'm called the Video Games Professor. I'm a proud gamer, was a globally ranked Street Fighter player, and a globally ranked digital card game player. However, I'm much more than a professor of video games. I'm a curriculum developer, a program creator, and a fan of the potential of what video games and the platforms they show up in have to offer our educational system. One of my favorite examples of the crazy amount of math and thinking that goes into video games comes from the major esports title, League of Legends. In League of Legends, two teams of five compete to destroy the enemy base. You can fight your opponents and defeat them by reducing their health to zero, but in a few seconds, they'll be back and ready to fight again. So you need to be very careful about which fights you choose to take. And we track this by checking three values. Each player's health, each player's defenses, and the amount of damage that each player can do. And by combining those values, we can make a calculation that'll help us determine who's going to win each fight. Now where this gets crazy is those values are different for every one of the 150 different characters in the game. And there are a litany of other variables that go on in League of Legends that'll affect this variable minute by minute. And we have 11 and 12 year olds who are able to make these calculations on the fly every minute of the game for 45 minute games. It is astonishing how brilliant our kids are when they play these kinds of games. The trick is figuring out how we bring that thinking into the classroom. Whether it's an essay, whether it's um, any kind of documentation paper whatsoever, they're more inclined to want to do that than have to do a paper on some subject that they have to do because it's part of their degree. So really, in one sentence, like it's it's like, should we get video games in classes? Yes. Why? Because they're much more engaging than the standard classroom. Classrooms are way out of style and they're so obsolete. We need to put video games in, in like academia like yesterday. With all that esports has to offer, why hasn't it crossed into mainstream media? Especially for teens and kids the way, say, most of the streaming shows we all know and know our children love. There's a lot of work that needs to be done with um, educating people particularly parents as well um, so at the moment I've been recruiting students to join this eSports course um, and sometimes I would have parents call the college to contact me about you know why is my child doing eSports is there is there a, are there jobs in it and I will always you know obviously offer that understanding that there's lots and lots of different things that they could do you know it's not about being a player but they could be a shoutcaster a coach um, a team manager, a broadcaster, you know, there's lots and lots of things that they can do. So in terms of those that all types of media, they are slowly merging. Um, I think the biggest difference with games and all those other media that I talked about, so film, TV, radio, the games really sort of set apart from all of that because it's active, you know, someone is controlling things that are going up on the screen um, and there could be so many different skills with regards to that you know think about hand-eye coordination I think that games should be seen in a much more positive light than it already is I I do see a lot of people watching streaming some people say that streaming is the new TV right uh, but uh, what I think it's different and what I I think it's super engaging about streaming is that different from TV I feel those are real humans and I think it's one of the main reasons I see like my teenagers crazy about some streaming some streamers and watching them and even myself I think streaming also gives us the possibility of seeing and progressing something that sometimes we don't have the time to invest as much or, and interacting in a way that I wouldn't see like myself doing it. So I think it's a pretty fabulous way. Uh, and at the same time, challenging because you never control who is going to be there and what they're going to say, right? So it brings a lot of challenge to you, um, but that's another, another story. They can't personally cater to everyone's needs. They, they, they can't just be, you can't just search up for um, TSM, Imperial Hall, Apex top players on, on TV and you can't get that straight away. Um, 
I, I think with with it's a lot about accessibility and how easy it is and how everyone has a computer in their house now. Kids have access to phones, computers. It's it's a lot more. It's a lot easier for them to engage in that kind of content through Twitch and YouTube than it is to find any of it on TV. Um, especially with being able to watch playbacks or watch highlights at any time they want. And if esports is a multi-billion dollar industry, live streaming is only growing, representing 4 million in daily revenue for Twitch, for a total of 1.5 billion in 2019. Traditional broadcasters want a piece of that. Companies like Netflix have tried to introduce more interactivity with content like the Bandersnatch episode of Black Mirror, but there's a long way to go before they can match places like Twitch. So what's the way forward? What's the future of esports and what's it gonna look like? The future is incredibly exciting. More and more, we're gonna see high schools, colleges, and universities grapple with competitive video games either as a varsity opportunity or as an educational one. We're also gonna start seeing more video games show up in the classroom as a teaching tool, be it Minecraft Educational Edition or all kinds of other games. I think it's very important that um we bring in so many more sort of media and gaming isn't going anywhere so get on board you know celebrate it spread the word i've always said 2020 would be the big year of esports and i thought it would kind of be some sort of industry boom but every year it's it's just growing and i've been surprised by something else and it's normally how much money is in esports so uh i think five years from now i'd be really interested to see where it's at and hopefully um more people are aware of it, more people are engaged in it, and people who want to pursue a career or an opportunity within esports do have the ability to do so and are aware of it. Whatever shape it takes, it's gonna be great. Let's go.